Hi everyone. There's an enormous amount of free GIS data available, but not all of it is in easy-to-use formats, like shapefiles or geotiffs. Let's take a look at the different kinds of non-GIS files you may encounter. Text data files usually come in three formats, Excel, CSV, or plain text files. Getting this data into QGIS can be a little tricky, so in this video, I'll guide you through the steps. Plain text files are the hardest ones to work with, so I'll cover those first. The goal in working with text files is to get the data into the same format as an attribute table, in other words, into rows and columns like a spreadsheet. Plain text files are called delimited text files. These are files where all of the formatting has been stripped out, making them plain text files, with the individual data cells separated by something, usually a space, a comma, or some other character. To make these files usable, you first need to identify the separator. You can then import the file into a spreadsheet with the rows and columns correctly defined. Here's an example, a geographic names file from the USGS National Map website. The first three lines are the column names, followed by the actual data. The separator is the stovepipe character. Now we can import this file into Excel or any other spreadsheet program and make it readable. Here are the steps. Open Excel and create a new blank document. Go to File Import. A box will appear. Select Text File. Locate the text data file. Then click Get Data. A window will appear. Check the delimited box, then click the Next button. You'll see this. This where you specify the separator. The most commonly used separators are listed. Since this file uses the stovepipe character, check the other box and type a stovepipe character into the box. The stovepipe character is on the backslash key, just above the return key. Hold down shift to get the stovepipe. As soon as you type it, the preview should change. Click the next button and you'll see this window. This lets you set the data format for each column. You can also skip columns if you want. I usually ignore this step and click Finish. Excel will ask you where you want to put the data. I'll choose Existing Sheet. It will take a few seconds to process, and you'll see this. Look at the first row to make sure it shows the name for each column. Now you need to look for two specific columns, Latitude and Longitude. These are often shown in both DMS and decimal formats. In this example, the DMS coordinates are in columns N and O, and the decimal coordinates are in columns P and Q. You can use either set of coordinates in QGIS, but make a note of the column names. You'll need it later. Now we're ready to export the file in CSV format so QGIS can import it correctly. First, I recommend saving it as a regular Excel file, just in case something goes wrong. Then go to File, Save As. Select CSV as the format and click Save. Now that we have a CSV file, we're ready to go to QGIS. In QGIS, create a new project. Go to Layer, Add Layer, Add Delimited Text Layer. This window will appear. In the File Name field, click the button to the right to locate the CSV file and make sure CSV is selected for file format. In the geometry section, QGIS throws a bit of a curveball here. Latitude, longitude coordinates are usually specified in latitude followed by longitude, but here, those coordinates are reversed. An easy way to remember this is to think back to your high school algebra, charting points on an XY graph. The X axis is horizontal, so on a globe that's longitude. The Y axis is vertical, so on a globe that's latitude. To set these fields, Scroll the bottom window to the right to find the latitude, longitude columns. This file contains coordinates in both DMS and decimal formats. QGIS should be able to read both kinds, but I sometimes have trouble getting DMS to work, so I'll select the decimal columns. You can also choose a CRS if you want. When everything is set, click Add, then Close.
Here's what you should see. I'll open the attribute table, and there's all of my data, ready for whatever I need to do. If you don't want to have to repeat all of those steps, right-click on the layer in the Layers panel and Export, Save Features As. This will create a normal shapefile layer you can use in other projects. Working directly with Excel and CSV files. Sometimes file downloads are available in multiple formats, such as Excel, CSV, or text. In these cases, download the CSV file and you can go directly to QGIS. The file will be ready to import. I usually open these files in Excel just to see what I've got to work with and to identify the latitude, longitude columns, but that's optional. If you download an Excel file, just open it and save it in CSV format and you're ready to go. If you don't have Excel, if you don't have Excel or another spreadsheet program, you can skip that and go directly to QGIS. Here I'm bringing the plain text file directly into the add delimited text layer. Since I didn't convert this to a CSV file this time, I'll check custom delimiters and type a stovepipe character into the others box. This makes the sample data visible in the bottom box. I set the lat slash lawn fields as before. A final word. Sometimes text file downloads will be in zip format, and unzipping them may reveal both text or CSV files and one or more shape files. Don't assume the shape files contain the same data as the others. Here's a page from the USGS with a data set of volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits. In the download section, there's a link to get the entire data set as a CSV file. Clicking on it downloads a zip file, which looks like this. There are a bunch of CSV files, plus a shape file. Loading the shapefile into QGIS produces this. It looks okay, but opening the attribute table doesn't show very much. Maybe the CSV files contain more information. To check this, I'll open the main.csv1 with a text editor. It looks like a mess, but there's clearly a lot of information there. More than in the shapefile, I'd use the CSV files in this case. Another thing to be aware of is that some text files don't contain latitude, longitude coordinates. I don't know what to do with those. If somebody out there knows, please let me know. And if you want to stick it to the man, you can get perfectly workable, free alternatives to Excel from FreeOffice and LibreOffice. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.